Hey guys, welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Colony Management Simulator Extraordinaire. My name's Twitch here, we are going to face a few of the problems that I've been trying to get to for a little while now in this episode. Well, the things we're going to do, we're going to try and get the major electronic system in place, i.e. get the big multi uh, heavy watt wire, that's the one I'm talking about, all around the outside of the base so that we can start making individual power loops. We're going to try and dig our way down to the oil, yes indeed, down the side here we're going to try and dig as far as we can get down a little bit of an access way so we can get down and start producing plastics and the third thing I want to do of course is to get some extra duplicates in here we're taking a little bit of time to actually get some of the jobs going that we want to do here so I would very much like to do that you might notice that I am rearranging the waste water system here this is because I've got a very nice little bit of uh, void space off to the left and I reckon that is one of the best places to start putting down a light a little transformer station somewhere where we can bring the heavy what wire inside the base and split it down into more manageable uh, wires and conduits. The reason that we want to get down to the smaller wires is of course the fact that the smaller wires can go through tiles. It, it's, it's almost entirely uh, down to that. The heavy watt wire you have to like put some special su super planning into it. You can see that block on the top left is the way that you can get it to go through like solid walls if you can if you will but that that's a terrible block. It lets all the all the heat through and stuff like that. Yes yeah, it's, it's not best. We're, so we are extending out the little area that we have here moving uh, putting a door in place getting the tiles up moving the water valve which of course has led us to a little bit of an issue of the fact that we now have nowhere for our polluted water to go this is a, a problem that I'm acutely aware of this entire time but for some reason do not seem to put uh, play with the priorities I don't know this is just a little bit of a hangover from people having to go me all the time for putting uh, nine priority down for just about everything uh, and I realized by the end of this episode what is actually the better way of uh, doing that but across the top here you can see that I'm putting down the orders for another heavy watt wire this is going to be the one that's going to actually stretch all the way through the base we're going to try and find some way of using this area or this wire in particular to build some other uh, transformer stations somewhere I'm um, just quickly having a look at where the carbon dioxide emptied out and also rejecting those particular duplicates because they are just not good for us in particular we're looking for someone who tidies someone who builds and someone maybe supplies or something like that we're not looking for another digger we're not looking for another farm we're not looking for another research or operate. Maybe an operate. We could probably get away with an operate. As a new dawn breaks, we're going to follow our man Shrouticus around because he's the guy who's actually been keeping the base running in the background. While everyone else has been off doing all the high profile jobs, such as like getting the natural ja gas generator up and running or digging out the new area for the new building, Shrouticus has been running around in the background, just making sure everyone has what they need to get their jobs uh, done. Another thing that I noticed whilst we are following Shrouticus though is people are making a mess everywhere and rather than stop and consider why people are making a mess everywhere I just go that's a lot of polluted water I'm gonna have to deal with here and get to one of the things that we've been saying for a little while I now dig a hole where we can empty out all the polluted water bottles and it can get sucked up by a pump and put into the dirty water system uh, hooray that was definitely a job that definitely needed doing but I, I just chosen to focus on the wrong thing here for a little while don't worry We'll come back to that. So now we're watching Brum run around. And the reason that we were watching Brum was because he was the guy with the lowest... Um immunity that's the one immunity i wanted to know why it turns out he was just working in the swamp biome but whilst that was going on literally the moment i looked away somewhere a water pipe got broken i have no idea no idea i've, I've spent the whole time that i was just looking at it there trying to figure out where the water pipe broke or how the water got out it's not even particularly hot water so it couldn't have come out the tank it's not full of slime lung or anything like that but i do know is if the pump gets turned on while well, that water is there we're gonna have a bad day and we're gonna have to like replace the sieve uh another thing that i've just noticed is my natural gas power plant has just like died now the reason for this is because all of the gases have been sucked out of the uh, the, the little area there with the natural gas geyser uh, and thus uh, all the carbon dioxide and oxygen that the duplicates were breathing when they put the place together also got sucked through those pumps and broke the generators which uh, is a little bit vexing but i don't actually have time to deal with it right now we have got this problem brewing over here once again following shroud because as he does the work and i'm just giving a little bit of thought to how people are going to start getting 
around and putting this bit of heavy watt wire in place here because of course it's all good putting a great big line across the top of your base but if people can't actually get up there or the duplicates sorry can't actually get up there and deal with it well then it's just not a goer at all in any way a shape or form so now we've got a lot of uh, decent water on the floor it's actually going to make it a little bit easier for people who are dealing with the farm over this side uh, our man shadow of course because uh, they can just come back and pick up the water from here and put it on the sleep wheat unfortunately that water is going to get quite hot and it's going to bring a little bit of danger to the sleep wheat but uh, nothing major this area of slime lung really uh, is kind of like a thorn in my side right now uh, I'm not sure what to do about it there's a lot of slime just in the in the wall plus also is where we we bring all our slime so the chances are it's just going to be an area of slime lung for a little while but the problem comes when there's any sort of air problem in the base uh say i don't know like a little bit of foreshadowing here let's say that i do a big dig somewhere and put all the priorities up to nine uh and forget to keep the base running in the background and the wall and the air sort of pressure drops and all the polluted air starts pushing up into the base that can be a bit of a problem so uh, that's definitely something i need to address at some point track is doing the runs back and forth between the cold biome uh, and some of the uh storage compactors there brilliant so i've noticed the patch of polluted oxygen at the top there and that is how you let slime long multiply so we're not going to let that carry on we're going to put an oxygen deodorizer in there and let that deal with it so we're going to start also building the access way down to the oil uh, Hopefully we can get this done in this time. And thankfully, uh, I have learned previously that if you send a single ladder down on its own, it will take duplicates a lot longer to dig it than if you build, uh, dig uh, two holes either side. Because then the duplicates can kind of get at the side of the ladder, if you will. And that will save a lot of time. Talking of saving a lot of time, I've ripped down one of the doors that lead to the cold biome. Because it was really just, it really was just killing time. Uh, I've also noticed that the, uh, the wire didn't quite, quite get hooked up into the right place for that pump. So we've now hooked that up. And that should be the entirety of the clean water well the dirty water polluted water system are sorted out starting work on the uh, second barracks here or waiting for that duplicate printer to uh, kick over and give us a new guy and we're going to spend some time just kind of cleaning up the base le letting things tick over there you can see that wheeze wart that i've set to dig up there uh, that's because i don't think it's doing its job properly if we look at the temperature zone uh, at any point uh, and i do do this repeatedly during the episode and i'm afraid you're just going to have to watch out for it uh i noticed that it's not making the area as cold as the other weeds warts that are away from a wall and my idea behind that is the fact that maybe it's because it doesn't have the airflow to affect other areas around it so i'm going to try and rip it down rip down the farm tile next to it and put that put it one over to see if that happens so uh during that time we've let a couple of drex free and i'm not that not that fond of them to be honest so what we're going to do is just outright kill them uh zedtech turns out to be the most bloodthirsty of the group uh, who knew it turns out it's the most quiet ones uh, and manages to kill them remarkably quickly that gives us a little bit of meat and of course some fabric stuff uh looking through those duplicates also not good gonna reject those as well the uh, only duplicates we're gonna take on are ones that we actually need uh people uh, like ones that have specializations in the jobs that we need i spend most of the night going around and checking out like germ levels in the oxygen they're all down in like triple figures which for germ numbers is ridiculously low so i'm kind of happy with this but then looking down around here i'm not so happy with the germ counts are down low so we spent a little bit of time going around making sure that the pump for the wastewater system is initiated people wet themselves over the floor i spend more time not worrying about that and just mopping it up and putting it into the waste uh, but at the same time i'm like okay let's try and clean this little area up here so i put down a whole bunch of sweep orders at quite a high um quite a high priority there the mistake number one was the high priority what i should have done is just left it a relatively low priority and let uh, shroudicus deal with it then whilst killing time i go over to the storage compactor above the water which is where we put all the ice and snow that we collect and drop the ice and snow on the floor so they can melt over the water that's that's why i put it there it's uh, gonna be a good juice i'm fairly sure it's something that i've not seen anybody else do either so uh, i don't know maybe I, maybe i'm original there maybe i'm not let me know it's always nice to know okay so during this the whole time people are going around and doing a little odd jobs but mostly they don't seem to be focusing on anything and i and i noticed this quite strongly today not only are the clean orders being taken all the way to the other side of the base for some reason with the storage compactors even after i put a new one a new storage compactor down with the right settings on it clear out all the 
all the sweep orders and then put down a whole bunch of new sweep orders. Yeah, even that is not enough to get them going here rather than at the other side of the base. I don't, I don't know what the deal with that is. Um, I, I don't know if it's a bug or if it's just me not telling them how to do stuff properly or what. Yeah, I, I have no idea. But in the end, I decide... Whatever. I don't care. What I care about is getting rid of this polluted water. So I go around and spend a little bit of time uh, just picking up the, polluti the, the polluted water for sweeps. Uh, and another day uh, breaks through. Now, this is the day where I'm like, you know what? I've, I've watched you, all you duplicates, go around and do whatever you want for long enough. It's time that we start uh, focusing on some priorities here. So I, I throw all caution out the window, break every rule that I've told myself I'm going to do for this series, and start upping the priorities at the bits I'm looking at, just so that we can make sure the duplicates are working where I am looking. I mean, nothing bad ever comes from that, right? One of the bonuses of ripping through this corridor that we're working on right now is the fact that it's all copper ore. And if you have a look at our min uh, metal ore, well, in fact, if you had looked at it but when I started talking, we were measuring in kilograms, and now we're measuring in tons. So that is great. We have upgraded the measuring system. I'm all about using the uh, largest numbers we possibly can. I suppose actually technically the smallest numbers, but with the biggest unit after them. Yeah, that works out pretty well. And amazingly, just during that ramble, we have got quite a distance across the top of the base here. The next stage is going to be a little bit more difficult because we've got to put a platform in place and things like that. But everything seems to be working out well. I'm just having a quick look around to make sure the wastewater system was working as intended. And yes, it was. The uh, platform gets placed down. I am actually starting to wonder whether I wanted to make those mesh tiles or something like that. Uh, but at the same time, I have also like sectioned off a nice little area for the farm here. So that's also good. I think what's going to happen is I'm going to put another layer of tiles above that heavy watt wire. And that's kind of going to be like a utility floor, if you will. Um, and then that, that should work out well. The thing that I'm considering now is whether I let my duplicates run along it. Do I make it a too high gap or not? Do I just go across the top from the airlock there? I think that might be the case. It'll give us a little bit more room than I was actually intending to have there. But wh whatever. Space is, like, cheap, right? It's the only thing that is cheap is uh, getting, the, getting the space. Everything else we need to dig for. All right, another day of dawns, and hopefully we are going to get this entire wire system put in place here. Now, during the first hour of any day, duplicates are free to do whatever they want. Uh, mostly, they will get on with work, but if they didn't get to take care of their bodily functions last night, they will... Uh prioritize that in the first hour of the morning but uh during the work schedule they are forced forced no matter what their bodies are telling them to come and uh, do some work also the same during uh, red alert if you ever find yourself uh in a situation at night maybe downtime has just just ticked and there is one job you need to get done before the morning i don't know maybe you're working on the toilet or something like that uh then uh, red alert that, that that's definitely the only time i've ever actually had to use it I, in fact i'm not not sure how many other times red alert actually comes screaming through for me i'm not i'm not sure when i would actually want to use it at all okay so i'm having a little look at the jobs here and i'm uh, looking at the research and i'm looking at what people are doing i'm kind of thinking mad frank could definitely come along and have a look at this uh, natural gas geyser for me over here we have no idea how long it's going to be until it fires back up but it is a job for our highest trained scientist, and that is, of course, Mad Frank, the scientist who has been on it since day one. Uh, in fact, we're going to try as hard as we can to try and get Mad Frank up to, like, master scientist or whatever, like, the next level is. Uh, and so, it, mainly in the hope that we can get the uh, the gas geyser analysed quicker. That, that's what I want to know, is how, how long until it turns back on. I also rip the pump out of there because I don't want the carbon dioxide that Mad Frank is uh, breathing out to go in to the system. I do decide at some point that maybe we need to get a filter on there, but we also did just watch me rejecting all the duplicates again because, of course, obviously, because we're after specific jobs, it's going to throw us all the ones that we don't want. It's going to be a theme throughout the entire of this episode, just to give you a little bit of spoilers there. But Mad Frank back at work, and it's going to take a fair bit of time for him to be able to do anything. So we're going to go back to the main working front of the uh, of the job here. And as you can see, the last three bits of wire need to be put in place. One thing I have noticed is you'll notice that they don't use the ladders. They go up and around the rock on the outside there. I'm not, I'm not sure why they did that. Uh, like, nothing about, like, how I think about pathfinding should scream that one out. Upgrading Mad Frank, or promoting him, I should say, to the top scientist position here. And I also know that it's going to start uh, affecting his morale, so I put a little bit of cornicing up in the room there. 
It might work, might not. You never know. There we go. Isn't isn't that lovely? Ah, as you can see, he's been in there for uh, two days now and has done quite a bit of research and has only done about a third of the bar. So it's going to take us a little while to get there. Uh, during that time, we are digging a down. Yes, indeed. Um, people still making a mess everywhere, and I don't know if I've actually got round to addressing it or not. Unfortunately, the way to address it was literally just the flick of a one a switch. Let's look over there. Looks like maybe I have turned it on. I don't know. The uh, the major toilets were actually missing their water input. If you'll remember, I had that secondary water tank. Well, it was actually my, my first water tank before we opened up the big water tank. Uh, that had actually run dry, and I forgot to throw the switch that toggled from one pump to the other. So we needed to do, uh, do that. Indeed, we'll then do that we did so i'm noticing there is a lot of a backup in the in the system here so i go ahead and uh, put down the high priority for getting the sand in place and then downtime strikes so uh red alert is the winner there it, it got the job done and then we're gonna turn it off and let everybody sleep beautiful during the night, I noticed this excessively larger hydrogen and chlorine cavern open to the side of our dig site there. I'm not sure if we're ever going to get around to using that for anything. I mean, it is a massive, massive area, so it would be a little bit of a shame not to make some sort of use of it, but it's full of chlorine and hydrogen, so it might be a little bit of a trouble there. Talking of chlorine and hydrogen, you can see that my base is getting a little bit inundated with the uh, gases that are coming out of this particular hole here. That's because at the airlock, the roof and the Door, top of the doorway meet up exactly so what I need to do is put a little bit of a, a gas trap in there maybe some way of flowing the gas away from the door and this is something that I uh, start up in a little bit of time I also noticed that I have uh, put a a clean order at the front door just try and make it a little bit nicer the real observant of you would have noticed down in the bottom left of the dig area there there appears to be something resembling another natural gas geyser this is because it is actually another natural gas geyser and that's actually probably a good idea seeing as we don't know how long the other one is going to take to reactivate it so trying to find another one would be a good plan so we're coming down and i'm starting to think that maybe we're about to dig in to that big old patch of polluted oxygen there but then i noticed there's some polluted water that we're going to run into and things are just going to be all awkward so i decide maybe not to bust through the abyssalite but in fact put down a ladder going down all the way over to the side here i got a, for some reason got it in my head that going down through the hot area is going to be a little bit easier than going down through the slime lung area this might work this might not in fact it does uh, stop us getting uh, all sorts of slime lung issues worked out in the back Okay, nighttime strikes us, and Mad Frank has actually got about a third of his progression towards uh, the master scientist there, so that's uh, looking pretty good. I was also noticing that there's a few jobs that actually require master mastership of uh, like two jobs. For instance, to be a um, exosuit engineer or something like that, you need to be good at uh, supply as well as research. Uh, it was quite an interesting thing to note. Space cadets as well. They they've got uh, quite an extensive list of things that they need to be uh, pro uh, proficient in before they will do anything. Watching our workforce on the side here, I'm noticing that there is literally no oxygen to be used anywhere in that hole and that makes me a little bit sad but it also makes me think maybe we need to start working uh, towards Enviro suits the uh, the exo suits there so I start putting down a little bit of the research and decide that maybe it's time to start putting a filter in place for the for the gas that comes out because we don't want to have a situation where we're breaking everything again so I start figuring out what gas pipes we can reuse which ones we need to change which ones need to go where um, the real observant of you would notice that I immediately get it wrong uh, because I forget that you're sorting out for a specific gas um, that comes out the middle and then the other ones just kind of get thrown out the end uh, and I for some reason thought it came out the other way around but you can see that my base is already starting to lose a little bit of color and we are having a severe troubles uh, keeping the pressure up that's because the dig priority is uh, taking everybody's job away from them not amazing but not terrible either pipes are getting put down and I'm starting to feel a little bit good about how things are going at the top of my base we're really just working on the little dig area now just to try and get 
everything put into place exactly as we want it. We've got to try and get down towards that crude oil. There are patches of crude oil to the same situation as there are like water patches running around up here so we can deal with that. You can see that I have noticed my problem here and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to wipe out all the pipes, start again. Probably the easiest way to go. Uh, I um and are about the uh, dig and farm person on the end there, but I'm like, no, no, we really need someone to be a janitor uh, and a rancher. The, these are the things we want. So we're just going to wait. We could have just taken on more more duplicates to take, get more jobs done, but that's not how I work. Uh, not at all. Okay, so digging down a little bit further, there seems to be some sort of like paradise off to the left there. You can see there's it's all like pinks and blues and wonderful colours, and there's even a little pet that you can go and like have fun with, and it's not even that hot, so I mean, maybe we'll put a little bit of a break room down here or something like that. I do know that we need to do some way of making the way down here uh, more accessible uh, because obviously we're going to put our oil production facility down here because it's like right next to the oil sorry the plastic production facility because it's right next to the oil it takes in the oil it pumps out plastic plus a whole load of heat that we have to deal with but that that's fine we can definitely deal with heat so we want to like make the way down easier you can see that the um airlock modification is uh, going down well and finally someone has decided ah oh, Oh, I really thought they were going to go and do the uh, do the pipe work there, but no, no. Zed must have just had to have gone and got himself uh, some oxygen or something like that, and then headed his way back for some more uh, digging. Uh, another three there coming through and grabbing. Uh, I think another three is actually doing a lot of the slime running at the moment. He's the guy who's going around and making sure that uh, the algae is being produced or uh, the slime is being converted to algae at all times. Because as you can see, we are pumping our way uh, through there, build, uh, digging up some more slime i'm also giving thought to the idea of going around and walling off all the slime I, I i probably should have done it a long time ago but obviously the slime it vents polluted oxygen and that then like has gives a slime lung that we have to deal with whereas if i just walled it off it would all be trapped inside the rock so maybe maybe not it's not something i'm going to get to uh, this episode but maybe something to watch out for for the next and the majority of this next uh, the rest of this episode is just going to be digging down but but if you look if you use your meat cameras you can see on the right and the left hand side of the base there we've got all that crude oil there's also fossil which i've never run into before i've never like had to use it it says it's a uh, a building material so maybe at some point we'll build a fossil chamber down here it might be an idea i don't know if it's particularly heat resistant or anything like that I'm, in fact might even have to go look on the wiki between episodes to find out what's going on. One thing I am noticing is the area just outside that airlock has got a ridiculous mix of all the different types of gases on the go. So I think what I need to do is put a pump system down there and something that will just cycle out all the gases, maybe have a whole bunch of filters on it uh, and put all the gases that we can collect into different holes. And I think that would be uh, a nice way of, well, one, cleaning up the area, but two, also getting some nice gas, uh, gas storage on the go. All right, so we're all the way down and I think it's time to have a look around see what we've got going on on the base up top here have things like water melted everywhere of course it has that always happens still not sure where it comes from though no idea at all uh looking around at the air pressures i'm not feeling great but with the ending of the big dig comes the reassertion of all the priorities that came before so thankfully because there's not many things on the go down here that everybody else is getting back to it we saw a slickster there a slickster is uh, one of the one of the critters that I'm actually interested in dealing with. He will absorb some of the carbon dioxide that my duplicates have been breathing out and output a whole bunch of oil or excrete, I suppose. The Slickster's excrete oil? I, th I think maybe a Slickster excretes oil. But with the closing of the night, the digging of the hole, the, uh, the install of the power system... And unfortunately, the lack of getting duplicates. I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time when we're going to go around and try and deal with the oil. We're going to make some plastic, maybe dig upwards. I'm not that bothered about reaching upwards until we can get some exosuits on the go. We definitely need to get a thimble reed farm on the go and get the uh, textile loom up and running. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!